All right, we are live. Welcome everybody to This Week in Beer Money. It is a show where we t take it is a show where we take a dive into the hottest posts from the Beer Money subreddit this week. Of course, we're going to answer your questions or actually Michael Shang is going to answer your questions. And of course, we're going to talk about what's hot and what is not in the Beer Money world. My name is KJ, better known as Fishery on Reddit, and I am joined with the mighty Ox. How you doing, Ox? Do we have Ox? No. I'm doing all right. Excited for the show. Oh, there we are. All right. Welcome, everybody. It is our second week. We have audio issues from last week fixed. Actually, I think we fixed almost everything that went wrong last week. Hopefully. Uh, but, of course, it's still just our second week. So give us a break, please, again, for this week and next week. But by week four, we better have everything fixed. If it's not fixed, uh, just in time for our break. Fire Daniel. It's the time for our break. Yeah. Oh, actually, yeah. We're gonna take a week off after uh, our fourth episode, I believe. All right. So. Your audio's out. Well, apparently KJ has lost his audio, so I'm supposed to take over now, and that's not good. Um, let me look at the outline here and try and work my way through this. Uh, today's episode is sponsored by Earnably, the site where you can complete offers and watch videos to get free gift cards, PayPal, or cryptocurrency. Today's episode is also sponsored by you, the viewers. Just by watching the show, you are supporting. But a special thank you to those who have subscribed with Twitch Prime and Cheered Bits. Next week, we're going solo again. There will be no guest on next week's episode. And we're planning to talk about some very important things. and be more like a town hall episode, whatever that means. But this week, we have Michael Shang calling in later in the episode to talk about Earn Honey and the new opt-in tokens. That should be a blast. And of course... All of you who are watching this show live on Twitch, you can earn beer caps just for watching and engaging with the stream. More information, just use iBeerCaps and iMyCaps in chat. Now, the next thing he had planned was current deals, but I have no info about that. So I'm going to skip over that until he comes back. Let's talk about some current events. Um, one of the one of the major uh, issues that came up this week on the Reddit sub was about gift talk, which what used to be one of the main uh, get paid tos in the industry. Apparently, they've started going ghost on people and no longer answering support, no longer showing up on their social media, and most importantly, not paying people. This seemed to happen after some sort of um, redesign. I don't know why they would redesign the site and then just leave but that seems to be the issue right now no one's getting hardly anyone's getting paid there's a couple people that said they have been getting paid but they didn't really provide any details on the post on reddit uh, um besides that uh you know just 
I've seen stuff like this before with other things in my past with pay to reads when all of a sudden you didn't hear from the owners anymore or anything like that. It's usually a bad sign. We also saw this just about a year ago with uh, not a mobile when they just kind of up and disappeared and stopped paying anyone. So if you are a gift talk member and you're still working toward a payout, you probably want to be cautious at this point. Uh, maybe look toward other programs to put in your efforts until they start showing that they are still around and are still paying. Um, that's about the only advice they can give. I mean, everyone seems to have their own favorite get paid to, and sometimes it's hard to leave that, you know, and look for something else. But you don't want to continue putting your efforts into something that's not going to pay you in the end. Hey, Ox, can you um, me? Next thing I like to talk about is a program that doesn't get talked about much on the Beer Money subreddit, and that's Radio Insight. Um, I found this survey program actually as a sponsored ad on Facebook about uh, six months ago or so, and really didn't earn much from it. There was a, they sent like a survey or two a month, but the payout's instant. It was always $3, they immediately send it after the survey. I want this um, hold on one minute. KJ may be back. I might be back. I'm not hearing you, KJ. Refresh. He's not hearing me? All right. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, KJ. I had to get a new microphone because I think we had an issue with this, uh, the one that actually is supposed to be good and work. I don't know. I'm using so many, like, connector things. Probably that's why. So, sorry about that. Where did we uh, leave off at? Huh? Where were we uh, just at? Where are we at? Say that again, KJ. Where did we get to? I was starting to talk about Radio Insight. Oh yeah, that's that's yours. I have, I know nothing about that. Yeah, I was gonna finish that. Then you can go to the current deals. I skipped over that. Oh okay. Uh, anyway, recently Radio Insight started a new um, program where they will pay you 10 cents for every receipt from Amazon.com, Walmart.com, or Target.com. Uh, you just need to in install their uh, Chrome extension, which will automatically put a button on the receipts from those three stores. And you can just it will automatically send it in once you press the button. And after every $1, uh, they will send you a Amazon gift card. What's really cool about it, though, is they will pay you for any receipt on your account from years ago. Like my Amazon account goes back to 2012. I've started sending in all those receipts. Last month, I made $35 from Radio Insight and still have many more Amazon and Walmart.com receipts to send in. There's no referral program, so just go to RadioInsight.com and sign up. I did have someone from Atlanta say that for some reason they didn't get accepted. So I don't know what their acceptance policies are. No idea why she didn't get accepted, but uh, it's definitely something to check out, especially if you do a lot of online shopping and don't mind people, someone expecting what you buy. Uh, right. Back to you, KJ. Are you there? Yeah. Um, are you ready? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Great. I don't, I can't trust any of these microphones anymore. Okay, so this week we have some actually pretty awesome deals. Um, so to start off, we have Chase Pay. If any of you who are watching have Chase Pay, you're a customer with Chase, download the Chase Pay app. Um, they are offering $8 off at Five Guys. So you have to order ahead and get $8 off. Um, it's actually a really great deal. And yes, or no, there is no minimum. So if you want, you can just walk in, get like a small little cheeseburger. It's free. You won't pay anything. But if you have never used the Chase Pay app before, you can actually log in with that. And um, you might also see a $10 off for a welcome offer. And it does stack with the Five Guys $8 off offer. So if you've never used Chase Pay before, you can walk into a Five Guys, 
actually order ahead and then walk into a Five Guys restaurant and you'll get yourself $18 off. So that's enough for like a whole meal at Five Guys. I know that it does say that not all Five Guys are participating. So you want to probably check the app before. For, but the one near me, there's one like five minutes from me and it does participate. So I'm sure I'm going to be going there right after the show. So that's the first great deal of the day. This next deal is actually a little bit interesting, if you can see what I'm uh, showing right here. Um, this is a deal. It's, it says it's gone right now. I don't know if it's dead, if it's coming back, but you might want to check on it because it does say it's undergoing a short maintenance period, but it's been like this for a couple days. Um, if it does come up, this is a deal to get two free AMC movie tickets. This is a... Uh, I don't remember who's sponsoring this uh, who's sponsoring this giveaway, but just submit your information. It's for marketing, obviously, but you'll get yourself about $26 worth of AMC movie tickets. Might be a good deal, but you don't get them until about the end of July. But still, great deal if it does come back. I take a look at it. You can go to it at coca-cola.promo.eprize.com slash Snapchat. If you're watching on YouTube, we'll probably want to go back 10 seconds and then pause and take a look at it. So that's another pretty good deal if it comes back, I think. I mean, I have MoviePass, so I don't actually worry about that very much. But MoviePass might be going down sometime. So the last thing, nope, we got two more. Actually, no, last one. Last week, I mentioned a $50 Better Homes or Better Mortgage. I don't remember where if you did a soft pull on your credit, basically signed up saying that you were interested in buying a house, you get $50 on Samsung Pay. I tried that out. I actually did do it the night after the show, and I said I'd report back, and it worked extremely well. I got $50 near instantly after doing that. Ox, did you say you did this one too? Maybe not. I'm not sure. Can Ox hear me, though? Yes, yeah, you're cutting in and out. Man, that sucks. Again, issues always have to happen. Um, were you able to get Radio Radical Insight? Or, sorry, not that. Um, Samsung Pay to work? Yes. Issues? I don't know. Yes, I did, but that. I was disappointed in the uh, gift card of, uh, that they have available to cash out for. <laughs> oh. Man. Wait, was that for Samsung Pay? Yeah. Actually, well, what gift card did you get? I didn't. I still have the $50 balance sitting there because uh, it's not really much I use there. I mean, I might use Best Buy at some point in time, but usually I'm an Amazon or a Walmart guy. For Samsung Pay, I think, well, do you just have 12,500 points? Yeah. Yeah, I think... If you go to the rewards tab, I'm actually going to check this out right now. So Samsung Pay. If you go to the rewards tab, there's an option for, sorry, uh, viewers, you can't see what's on my screen. What was that noise? Well, that was loud. Um, if you go to the redeem points tab, you can get gift cards, but you can also get a rewards card. For a fifty dollars Samsung Rewards card for two thousand twelve thousand five hundred points, and you can use that, and then you can—it's basically just a prepaid Visa card. You can use it anywhere. It's actually really good. Oh, I did not know that. Thank you. Fun facts. Also, anyone who's watching who doesn't have a Samsung Pay account, find a referral code somewhere online, uh, so you'll get five dollars right when you start using that. You'll have to find someone who has it, and then they'll link you to it. You'll both get five dollars when they sign up. And they have a lot of nice deals all the time. Plus, you get, like, rewards just for swiping your card at checkout. Samsung Pay, it's pretty great. Uh, did you talk about Gift Hulk? Yes, I covered Gift Hulk. I did not get to CrowdTap. CrowdTap. There's not much about CrowdTap. But uh, Gift Hulk. I'm actually going to pull up this Reddit post really quick. Oh, I have this issue again. Always go into the new Reddit. No one likes it. Sucks. Okay. It might be time for Gift Hulk to remove 
first. It might be time to remove Gift Hulk from the referral contest and most common beer buddy site list. I actually, I agree with this post. I made a comment on it, and I've been waiting for a payment since almost two months ago now. If anyone from Gift Hulk is watching this, uh, there's a lot of people like me, like me. So I cashed out, and then it just said stop by security. I think it's almost been three months. I'm not going to pull it up, but Gift Hulk, you owe me $5 for a long time now, honestly. Uh, but this is an issue a lot of people are facing. So if you're someone who uses Gift Hulk, who actually has gotten paid recently, like in the last couple of months, I really want to know because I've only heard negative stuff about it. But I do think it's a really important thing that we revise the most common sites because it is a sticky post but i really feel like if someone's new to beer money they should not be seeing that post first they should see it but they should first see the faq the faq is probably the best best like intro because it's it, it is kept up to date and it, it really asks all the questions that i think most people ask especially like the how can i make this much money in this many days it's a really good, very well written post. So if you're new to beer money, uh, you don't even know what beer money is. Definitely go to r slash beer money and then check out the sidebar for this FAQ. It is very well written. All right, so um, current events, current deals. That's most of what I had this week. But I do wonder if you're someone who views the beer money subreddit frequently. I am extremely curious what happened to the free food guy. I've talked to him so much in the past, but yesterday was free, or not free donut day. Yesterday was national donut day. And I didn't hear a single thing from anyone really about free donuts. So maybe there just wasn't any good deal to get free donuts, but come on, free food guy. You're, you're lacking, you're slacking. Especially with that free uh, $18, 8 or $18 at five guys. Definitely slacking on that. Okay. So, did you want to talk about CrowdTap Ox? I know nothing about CrowdTap. I haven't been there. You're the one that told me it was back. <laughs> well, shit. <laughs> I don't know anything about CrowdTap. Let's just take a look at the site. CrowdTap used to be a site where you could just look at... Um, different brands and then respond to them they just recently uh updated their site so get rewarded by taking part in polls and surveys free samples i never got a free sample i never heard of anyone who got a free sample stick with it free to join yeah i mean based on this it looks pretty nice but i haven't used it doesn't look much different than the last time I was there, so I don't know what they redesigned. They made it like more boxy looking. It's pretty much What's it, that? really. They just made everything a little boxier. Yeah, I'm here. I oh, I think he just heard ox. <laughs> they added boxes. Oh. They made it really boxy. Sorry. You're cutting out again. Damn, I need to fix fix all these issues. All right, so I guess we're not going to talk too much about CrowdTap. Just they relaunched their site. If you used it in the past, take a look. Don't have much to say about it. Okay, do you want to talk about anything else in current events? Or did you cover it all? I got everything else. You got it all? All right. We are full speed ahead again. Let's talk about the app of the week. App of the week. If you're new to the show, each week we have a recurring segment called App of the Week where we will find a new app that we have never seen before or more than likely you have never seen before and has never been posted on the Beer Money subreddit. We're going to take a look at the app. We're going to see what it has to offer, say what we think about it, and then recommend it or don't recommend it. And then, of course, it's up to you to decide whether you think it's worth checking out. So... The app of this week is called Family, and we actually talked about it last week, 
but not not exactly. Last week, um, we talked about We Run Ads 2, which is a promotional site for this app. They didn't release the app's name last week. But this week, we have the released version of the app, Family. So, um, I guess I could go to their site. If you go to WeRunAds2.com, it'll just redirect to the Family app. It's, it's Family without the I. Because they're a little edgy like that, I guess. So they just... Um, it's it, it's not really that... I don't know. The site doesn't have much information. It has an FAQ, which is actually important to read, I think. But if you go to the Google Play Store, you'll see the app is up. So let's just go through these images really quick. Millions of trending videos, not commercials. Okay, this is actually extremely puzzling to me. Because if you remember last week when we talked about this, the entire promotional site said, we run ads too. In response to Mark Zuckerberg saying, we run ads, Senator. And now the very first slide says, not commercials. So do they run ads or do they not run ads? That is a question. I actually did ask, uh, and they do not run ads yet. Um, Right now, they're just trying to build up their user base. But in the future, they will run ads, more than likely, very soon in the future, I'm hoping, for their sake. Um, so yeah, this is what the app kind of looks like. So you'll have this like wall of just videos. You can watch them. Earn real cash, not coupon, no catch. I really wish they used some sort of grammar in this. Earn real cash, not coupon, no coupon, no catch. Just a little period between them. So in the app, you'll earn yourself something called fam coins. I'll talk more about that in a little bit. But um, you'll earn fam coins for interacting with the app, referring people to it. Uh, watch, share, refer, and earn. Easy and fast. Uh, this is actually, I'll come back to this image. Get paid very simple and secure via PayPal. Um, you can see it in this image, actually. The PayPal payments, there's a minimum of $30. $30. It's pretty steep, very high. Um, I'll talk more about that in just a minute as well. Um, that's actually all the images. So I'm actually going to open the app on my phone. Starting next week, I hope, you'll be able to see what's on my phone. We just couldn't get it done this week. So in the app... This is actually the task page in this image here. Um, I can't zoom in on it. I don't know why. Uh, so invite fams. Okay. This is what you'll actually see if you download this app. There is This is an app that heavily focuses on referrals, which I don't know how I feel about that. But the app heavily refer, relies on referrals. So right now they're still offering a $3 for people you refer, there is like a small asterisk next to x, small asterisk next to that because when you invite fam, there is like a little catch, like they have to engage in the app, and then over six days you'll get yourself three dollars worth of points. Um, and then also there's a new fam survey challenge. It's a really easy easy challenge. Let's say it's three points. I don't think it was that much. I th or I think it was way more than that. But 1,000 points in this app equals a dollar, so 30,000 points to cash out. So every hour, you can see it here in this image, there is something called open fan box. So I just opened the fan box this hour. Six fam coin, that's how much I got. So from my experience with this, you'll get anywhere from five to ten fam coin per hour. So that's half a cent to a cent per hour that you tap on it. And then every day you can check in, which is also kind of interesting. So day one, you'll get 10. Day two, you'll get 40. Then 10, 10, 10, 10, and then 80 on the seventh day. And then I'm pretty sure you'll go back to 10 for day one. That's just what I'm guessing happens. Uh, not in this image. There is um, complete your profile. You can get 100 fam coins for that. Show off. Every day you can show off on social media, which is basically just sharing how much you've made with this app. That's for two cents a day that you do it. 
And then you can't see it in this image either, but you can watch videos for points. I'll come back to that as well. And then you can share a video on social media once a day for two cents, 20 points. And then check notifications once a day for 10 points. And then there is the survey. Uh, you can complete surveys for up to 20 points, I think, per day. So let's go back to watch. This is what their description on the app says. Win up to 100 Famcoin by watching videos, 5 Famcoin per time and up to 20 times per day. Though you will not be rewarded by every video you watch, just relax and enjoy good contents. Your fam, Famcoin will grow fast. I think they need to reword that to remove the word fast. Every day you can watch up to 20 videos. So 5 Famcoin per video, that's 100 points per day. That's 10 cents a day watching videos. So if we do a little bit of math, okay, $30, 10 cents a day, so that should be 300 days. Is my math right? It's right, okay. 300 days. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's right, okay. 300 days, and then you'll get yourself $30 just from the videos. So I told the family team, I'm like, that's not that impressive, honestly. But it's kind of obvious that this app is really, really trying hard to grow. So that's why they're doing $3 per referral. So I don't really have much else to say about this app. It looks nice. It works nice. Um, I probably spent about an hour yesterday just watching Delish videos. So after this uh, podcast goes up, we're going to... I'm going to make some cheesecake roll-ups with blueberry, with Daniel, if Daniel would like. But, yeah, that's the family app. If you feel like checking out, it's currently on Google Play, coming soon to iPhones. Uh, there's not much more to say about it. I don't think I'm impressed with it yet, but I feel like... I sent a lot of like advice to the family team and I'm like, here's what you can do to make this app good. It has potential and I'm just going to have to wait and see what they do with it. Do you have any thoughts on it, Ox? Did I cover it all? I think the name is weird. I think the name comes across as some sort of cult family. <laughs> it, it does not you know, say anything about, you know, making money or any of this. So I, I think right there they lose people. If I see uh, something called family in apps, I'm going to think it has something to do with parenting or something domestic. I think when you call something family like that, you start thinking of cults or mobs or other, other uh, things like that. You know, so it gives off a very weird vibe just from the start with its name. Yeah. I, I didn't even comment on that. It is it is a little weird. At first, it's like if you look at the app, it looks like it's an ice cream app just because, just because of this, like, this picture. But then you're like, it's a fam. So I don't know if it's really supposed to be called family or just fam, but dot L-Y. But they didn't, like, get the domain fam.ly, so I don't know. But the app is created by the company Video Up Limited. So I was actually really hoping that they would actually call the app Video Up. I feel like that would have been much better. That would have made so much more sense. Video Up, yeah. But um, the one thing I do want to add about this, it's extremely similar to the app Top Buzz, but it's a little bit reversed. And the, the um, founder of Video Up Family is actually, or was, someone who worked at Top Buzz. I don't remember what his position was. So he knows a lot about Top Buzz, obviously. The app is pretty similar, where you'll see content. But the difference is, if you have Top Buzz, and I've never used Top Buzz, so I can't say to how it works for beer money, you can make and share content on there. And then it's kind of reversed, because on there you'll get paid for people watching it. You'll get paid for the content you create, but this app, it's more reversed where you're watching content and then getting paid for that. Very slowly, but you're getting paid for that. So I don't, I don't think I have anything left to say about it. 
So I guess we will move on from that. But if you do want to download the family app, go for it. Uh, I can't, I don't know if I'm going to recommend it yet, but I feel like it could have potential in the future. So that is that. Do you have anything to add, Ox? Nothing that I would not recommend it at this point, not until we're seeing people getting paid and not until, you know, we're seeing more from it than just this very cryptic almost uh, app that really doesn't make much sense. That's true. Okay. Well, that is family. That is the app of the week. Um, we'll see what happens from there. But at this point, we are going to take a short break. And it's just a short break, okay? Maybe we'll fix the microphone issue. Probably not. That's probably an issue for next week. But... It's a short break. Literally, don't go anywhere. Just sit there. Maybe get some popcorn or get some $8 cheeseburgers from Five Guys. But we'll be back right after this short break with Michael Shang from Earn Honey. Don't go anywhere. All right. Hello, everyone. Hope you're enjoying this episode so far. This week's episode is sponsored by Earnably, and Earnably is a site where you can earn free instant rewards such as gift cards, cash payments, or cryptocurrencies. No, it's not a joke, and yes, you can actually do it. Earnably is a rewards and cash back platform that makes earning online simple, fun, and free. Earn points by completing offers, watching videos, and taking surveys. Then redeem these rewards points at any time for instant free rewards. It's that easy. Earnably has paid out over $500,000 to its members. So get your share today and head on over to earnably.com slash T-W-I-B to get started. Last week, Earnably was our sponsor as well. And I'll be honest, I'm a little shocked with how many people actually did go ahead and sign up. But if you're watching and you still haven't signed up, you have to sign up for this site. We're, we use it all the time, both Ox and I, and it's really a great site. It has really high payouts for all of its offer walls, and um, including Engage Me TV, which has some of the highest rates you can find with 0.8 per three ads that you watch. And it also has video loyalty and about four other video walls that you can watch. And it has a ton of offer walls, and I think I noticed they actually added a new one today called uh, Radium One. So if you have been an Earnable user and you've been waiting for Radium 1 to show up, they just added that today. Uh, really, Earnable is a great site. Thank you so much to Earnable for sponsoring this episode. And also, this episode is sponsored by you guys, the viewers, um, and especially those of you who have taken that extra step and decided to subscribe to this channel with Twitch Prime or not with Twitch Prime. Um, but really, even if you haven't subscribed to the channel, thank you just for watching it, whether you're here on Twitch or if you're on YouTube after it has been uploaded, or if you're one of those people who actually downloads this podcast and listens to it, I don't know how you managed to do it. I would die. But those of you who have subscribed with Twitch Prime, much appreciation to you. If you're listening to this and you have no idea what Twitch Prime is, Twitch Prime is a... Subscription service, very similar to Amazon Prime. In fact, if you have Amazon Prime, you have the opportunity to link your Amazon account to Twitch, and each month you'll get um, free loot with Twitch Prime in some of your favorite games. Probably, I know Fortnite's this week, or this month, rather. Um, Also, you'll get the opportunity to subscribe to any Twitch channel you would like, whether it be this channel or another. Do not let your Twitch Prime go to waste. Also, you can earn bits by watching ads on Twitch. They're just short 30-second ads, and then after you watch the ad, you'll get 5 to 100 bits. So that's about $0.05 cents to a dollar, and you can cheer that during any one stream. So even if you don't want to do any, like, support this show, you can definitely, or you should definitely support some of your favorite content creators on Twitch by either subscribing with Twitch Prime or watching ads for bits. Um, A lot of people were asking about that, so I figured it would be a great opportunity to inform you all of that. 
So additionally, I want to thank the 13 people who subscribed to our Twitch channel last week prior to this episode. So thank you to Dalo Down 10 Disa. What's up, David? Um, Burnt Snowflake Bad Girl Bad Girl Apes. Tacklit 123, Sloth 155, M Catherine 01, Ominous, Golden Eye 0242, Twitch Plays re- what, Retros. I cannot speak. And Ryan, what's up, Ryan? Random User 1 and Rusted Dreams. Thank you all so much for supporting the show. You are all greatly appreciated. And now back to the regular scheduled program with Michael Shang. I hope we didn't break anything. With Michael Shang. Michael, are you there? Yeah, hey, KJ. How are you doing? Hi, how are you? Thank you so much for coming on the show with us. No, it's actually my honor and my pleasure. It's uh, the first podcast I've ever done. So, you know, please bear with me if I'm a little bit, uh, if I'm not uh, with the program. I think we're all going to be on that struggle train right now. Because this is, uh, you're our first guest, which is awesome. Don't think I could have picked a better first guest myself. Actually, I did pick it. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> is everything working, Daniel? Everything is working? All right. So, um, we did make a post on the subreddit, the Beer Money subreddit, a couple days ago, just basically asking people if they had questions. So, we're going to get into those a little bit later in the show. Um, but first, I just want to start with a couple questions. So, before you worked for Do Good, or sorry, before you started Do Good Media, um, we found that you worked at Burger King Corporation, William Frick and Company, and OCA Ventures. So, can you give us a little background on those things, and then how you took those skills or those things that you did, and then somehow let and had that lead to the creation of Earn Honey? Yeah, absolutely. Um, great that uh, you checked my LinkedIn, but uh, that's wonderful. So uh, a little bit, even before all those, um, I was co-founder at a company called Fave Games. Um, you might have seen my uh, Reddit handle. It's from way back, like 15 years ago or something. I ran a, a micro transaction gaming platform similar to like, um, you know, coins on on uh, World, World of Warcraft, right? So that was a long time ago. Um, after we sold that, uh, I did marketing, director of marketing at William Frick. Uh, I was the um, assistant treasurer globally for Burger King and OCA was a, a venture capital firm. So I, I dabbled in a lot of finance and then um, a lot of uh, technical stuff. Uh, so how do we you know, start Earn Honey? Well, I mean, the, the real idea that of Earn Honey was that people hated advertising. So... Uh, if we gamified it, made it so kind of fun so people would watch, we, we feel that people would like it more. So our, our very first idea was to have like a memory game where people can win prizes for flipping over, uh, you know, little cards or right? like a memory. And then if you match them, you can, you can win something, right? So that's um, something we wanted an advertiser to back. Um, we, that never really happened. Um, but as we were testing this stuff out, we did a lot of market research on MTurk. Um, and somebody from MTurk just posted something on beer money and we got totally hammered like the first two weeks on earn honey and, you know, servers are down. We were totally crazy, but I mean, three years later, here we are. Wow. Ox, do you, did you do that task? Um, if, if I did, I don't remember, uh, that was a long time ago, so I don't really know. (laughs) I I don't, I don't remember it. I I was a late joiner to earn honey. I only joined a little over two years ago. Well, I mean, I was an earn honey user since the very beginning. Did you say that, um, was that like 2048, a game that you could play on earn honey? Yeah. Yeah, we, we looked at some different people, right? There's, um, you know, of course, everybody on Beer Money knows the top dog. Um, we wanted to do something fun. Um, the 2048 game that we had, I wouldn't say it was really fun, but uh, um, 
we, we're still trying to make it fun. That that's still our main goal. It's um it's really boring to sit there and, and watch stuff. So um, our main goal is to make it fun and and profitable. It's the it's, uh, the two main goals of our company. That's good. So I guess I have to ask. I think we're gonna ask this to every guest. Before you started Earn Honey, did you do any beer money sites yourself? Uh, actually, we did. Um, during the uh, during the creation of the company, I did play around with the number one guy for about three months. Um, a lot of surveys. I did a lot of surveys and offers. I, I did not realize that the number one company is uh, has a lot of women. Actually, they're like over indexed. They're like seventy percent females over the age of forty. And that's good. I know we're totally different. We are. Uh, I know, right? We're like 18 to 30, 70% males. Uh, so we're completely different. So all the market research I did was completely useless. But yes, I, I did use them quite a bit. All right. I always think it's interesting to see how these people who run these massive sites, like Earn Honey, how even before they started something huge, they started at the, the level where you're just a user. And then you take that and then make something great. Oh, absolutely. And it's like um, one of our top goals for or as long as I can remember was getting a, a panel of our users. Um, actually, I think my partner, Jerome, reached out to the Ox quite often. And his post is a thing we look at every month to see how we're doing. Uh, so I think all the best innovations come from the ground up. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's no surprise that all these companies started on beer money. That's really awesome. Ox just got a shout out. <laughs> That's a great post that you make each month though. Thank you. I, I didn't realize I was that influential. <laughs> if there was a way to sponsor that post, we would do it. So, uh, you know, write it down. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, before we get more into Earn Honey, um, I have a feeling that either now live on Twitch or in the future, someone's going to watch this and they're going to say, I have no idea what Earn Honey is. So just to like clear everything up, do you think you could, in like a few words, or not a few words, in a few sentences, maybe just explain what Earn Honey is to those who might not know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, at its core, Earn Honey is a market research company. Uh, so users come on to Earn Honey, um, we give them a a lot of different offers and surveys, um, videos to watch. Um, once during the, when they're watching the videos, they're also exposed to advertising. And uh, either ourselves or through other partners, uh, people do get uh, questions later about what they remember or what, you know, it's typically not about what you remember of the ads, but like how you feel about the brands that are advertised. Um, so that's the kind of like measuring the ROI of the ads that are on Earn Honey and the the publishers that work with us. All right. <clears throat> That's very good. So, um, I think this is probably the biggest question, the biggest topic we could possibly bring up for Earn Honey is its recent switch from the Honey Dollars that you could earn to these new opt-in tokens. So do you think you could just give a brief overview of what opt-in tokens are? And why you made the change? Yeah, absolutely. Um, thanks for asking. So this this one here is our attempt to bring more money into the system. Uh, so if you think about it as a, a pipe, um, advertising dollars come in at one end and it goes to users on the other end. Now we want to expand the pipe by having another input. Uh, the new input is going to be investors or people that like crypto. Um, so, so now you have two different sources of money going to the same users. And, and that's how, how we hope that, um, you know, for the 10 cents that we pay um, users, then maybe if they export it in the future, maybe in a couple of months when they get on exchange, they get 20, 30, 50, a dollar for the 10 cents, right? So um, that's, that's kind of our goal. Um, the other, you know, more, you know, that, that's a goal for, for users, right? Um, but like, why would people get interested in the opt-in coin? So 
Um, our vision is actually to consolidate the breakage that is so prevalent in this industry. Um, everybody's probably been banned before. I, I've seen it on Reddit. Everybody's talking about being banned. And then they lose some of the tokens, they create another account. Well, this ends up and it's bad. So we want to have like where every user is on every site can can pool their money together. So like a $5 minimum on one site and a $5 minimum on a different site. If you're on 10 different sites, you might have like 50 bucks that you can't get a hold of. If you have one single currency across all the different sites, then you can probably cash out and make it most of it, um, you know, most of it. So that's a, a different kind of strategy that we want to do. And we think that could really help the, the user base. I really like that. Because I totally agree with you where I know right now, I actually there's an extension that exists where it tells you what your balances are on all the different sites that you use. And it basically will say, yeah, it's worth nothing because you don't have the that $20 minimum. And it's, it's really eye-opening. I probably have hundreds of dollars just sitting on sites because I just can't hit the minimum or haven't yet hit the minimum. And then it's a struggle just like once you hit that minimum, then you're going to go, you're going to cash out. And that's just that big build up back to the minimum again. And at some point you're going to give up and more than likely you're going to lose money because of that. Yeah, that's right. I mean, there's, um, there's a competitor out there I won't name, but their minimum is like $25 and they're really, really, and they're really generous with like, you know, $5 on sign up and $5 you do this. But in reality, you'll never see it because getting to 25 is going to be really, really tough. Um, and, uh, you know, we started a company earn honey at $2 minimum for the first time, you know, like just so people can play around with it and, and cash out in a, you know, in a day or two. Right. Um, and I think this opt-in thing, if we ever get it to work across, we actually, um, I'm not sure if your, your viewers know, but we're the, um, the people behind video loyalty, uh, you'll see it on probably a, a lot of other GPT sites. So, uh, what we're trying to do is, um, get our video loyalty partners to work with opt-in so there's one single pool of money um that users you know don't have to have different silos of of five dollars here and there okay i that was actually another thing i was going to bring up just a little bit later Daniel, if you're able to uh show my screen for the stream uh, i'm actually on the optincoin.org site I did notice, and I was going to ask about this, um, under publishing and partners, you have these sites, so Grindabuck, InstaGC, CollectSkins, and ClickSense, and many more. Are these, like, why are they on here right now? Right. All right. That's a great question. Um, so these are, these are all video loyalty partners. Um, we send, oh, how much? We spend like $300,000 in December on these partners and the other ones that are not listed on here. Um, and all of them show, uh, a, a video part, a video product, right. Similar to some other competitors you might know of. Um, but we're trying to integrate opt-in with all of these partners and that's why they're there. I mean, they're already there because they're already in the system. If opt-in is a system of earned honey, then these guys are already on the system because they're already sending users to our, our platform, earning money and we're sending back API calls and whatever. So. Um, they're already on the system. They're already on it. So all we need to do is, uh, convert how they're, you know, we're, this is a discussion, right? It's a business discussion of what's in it for them, how they can join the platform if they want to, if they don't. Um, but I think we'll make a, a compelling case for them to join the platform, at least for the video loyalty product. So, um, users don't have to wait around as long to get to cash out. Okay, so I guess, so the goal with these sites is for at least a video loyalty wall on their sites, users will, instead of, so I'll take the example of InstaGC, instead of getting like uh, a point for every five videos you watch on video loyalty, instead you'll get a tenth of an opt-in token or something like that. Something like that. It's it's going to be. Um, we're in discussions or with with the with uh, you know many of these guys, and I, I can't go into details about what's in it for them. Um, and everybody's implementation might be slightly different, but at the end of the day, it's it's going to be very similar to what you just said. 
Yeah, so end goal is just adoption of this new token. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the the token itself, there's a whole ad ecosystem built around it. Um, for your users, I'm not going to get into the details of like all the all the nitty gritty, but one of the the prime usages of this token um, is so users can figure out what kind of advertising they want to see. Right. So there's a company called Ad Choices out there. Um, I'm not sure if you guys have seen it. Uh, it's an ad with the, mm -hmm. you know, I think Ox is, is nodding over there. Uh, so we're going to work with them. Uh, so instead of seeing, you know, a thousand ads that we don't want to see, we might see a thousand ads of cars or whatever else we were interested in, right? Um, and that will make it better for both the advertisers and our users. Uh, and the opt-in, the, the reason we picked the word opt-in is because we actually do care what people watch and if you're opting into something, that means you actually gave your consent to to see something. All right. So from that, I guess it's important to bring up, or at least ask the question. So Earn Honey is making the massive switch, or has already kind of made the switch to entirely opt-in tokens. I mean, right now, I think... It, you still make it very simple. So if someone wants to get PayPal, they can just convert 10 opt-in tokens into $10, right? A hundred, a hundred, uh, it's, it's, it's 10 100. cents. So a hundred, yeah. Right. Okay. So it's, it's very similar. So to the users who aren't interested in opt-in tokens, at least not at this point, you currently still do make it simple. So if someone wants PayPal, they can do it and not even worry about the fact that their balance is listed in a cryptocurrency. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we want to make it so seamless, right? Seamless for everyone. Uh, so the cash out process is exactly the same as we as we had for $100. Um, we do all the heavy list lifting. Um, in the next couple of weeks, we're going to allow users to cash out to their own Ethereum wallet. Um, I want to stress that we are an ERC20 token, so only ERC uh, Ethereum wallets can hold the tokens. Um, we're also planning a lot of activities in the next six to 12 months that can increase interest in a token, such as, you know, signing up the loyalty partners that we talked about, creating an ad preference platform that, that I just talked about. Um, and then uh, we're going to be at a, a lot of different trade shows in the next uh, three to six months um, to drum up interest for this token. All right. That's, that's awesome. Um, but I guess, I guess you kind of answered this question I had already, but what are the advantages of switching to a, cur a cryptocurrency over just the general standard U.S. dollar? Well, there's, there's actually a lot of um, you know major and minor differences, and, and uh, here I'll go through a few of them. Uh, the one thing we talked about was a lower minimum across the board. Uh, mm -hmm. This saves on fees. I think PayPal takes like 7% or something, depending on what country you're from. Um, one of the real important advantages is the um, users are now kind of the participants in the growth, right, of the company. Like if Earn, Hun Earn Honey last year did like over 5 million and um, none of our, I mean, our users got paid, but our users did not enjoy like the growth and equity of the company, right? So here's a chance for users to, to participate. Um, uh, let's see here. So instead of advertisers paying market for market research, um, investors and speculators can drive up the price of opt-in, which will directly benefit the holders of opt-in, which is everybody on, on the Earn Honey network. And we've also been extremely generous um, with users. Like if you uh, if you create a if you create an account um, for the first 12 hours, you get like double the the pay. Um, Every time you log in, like the first couple hours, you get um, like 50% more. It's just um, because we have our own token and, you know, we have we have big ideas of how the token is going to be taken in, in the market. And we're willing to just increase the payouts to users. That Yeah, that's a pretty great advantage. I think my favorite is that the that minimum. That That's a big one for me. If that could work, I would be a huge, major fan of opt-in. 
Awesome, awesome. Uh, the opt-in we're trying. But, yeah. So I guess it's still in the early stages, opt-in coin, but where do you hope to see opt-in token go in the future? So whether that be a year from now, five years from now, what's like the general roadmap? Oh, that's great. Um, so if you're really interested, people can go on at optincoin.org and take a look. Um, but just in, in summary, we're looking to um, expand from the 500,000 users that we have to, to hit the 10 million people that are interested in cryptos. Um, so that that's one, one key element. Uh, the other thing is uh, we're working on a whole ad platform that's based around the token. So it, it goes from advertiser to user directly. Um, and because of these tokens are great for microtransactions, we can actually do that way. Um, and then we love to see opt-in on an exchange. I mean, right now, um, something like HitBTC costs like $250,000 to get on. And we're seriously thinking about getting on, you know, paying that to get on there. Um, it all depends on how the, uh, how the investors react to our token and, and whether they like our company or not. Yeah, I actually, I did just pull up the white paper from uh, Optin. This is a, I mean, I'm not going to read it now because it's 38 pages, but that's good that you have a, a massive detailed white paper. Yeah, I feel thank like a you. Lot of, actually, uh... I, I wrote like 80% of it and it was, it took like four months. So, uh, you know, if you guys have any complaints about Earn Honey, like we haven't done anything in the last, uh, you know, since December, then... This is this white paper is to blame. <laughs> I mean, I mean, if you consider, I'm pretty sure your white paper is like five, four or five times longer than Bitcoin's white paper. <laughs> oh, I, I wish that length was the only reason that we'd be worth like forty billion dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, mark it down now. Length is the reason uh, that we're gonna be worth so much. <laughs> okay. So, in the future, that's let me the ask future. you. So, like, have you? What is your thinking on cryptocurrencies? Uh, this is the cryptocurrency episode. How could I not? Um. Well. In 2012 or early 2013, I can't remember. That's when I first found Bitcoin. But I made mistakes. That's why I'm sitting right here and not sitting on a yacht. Right. But, um, yeah, I mean, I use Bitcoin. I got a lot of faucet money. In fact, like faucets back then, I mean, if you don't know what a faucet is and you're watching, uh, typically people say faucets aren't worth it. Like you get half a cent, not even a cent, just for like filling out a Kopsha, putting in your, your Bitcoin address. But back in 2013, like you'd get yourself, I don't remember, 50,000, 100,000 Satoshi just for doing the Kopsha every 10 minutes. And I'm like, this isn't worth it, but I just want to get my first Bitcoin. So, or my first like chunk of Bitcoin. So that's, that's what it was for me. Oh. But since then, I've done a lot of training, trading. And yeah, I have a a crypto portfolio. It's not that impressive or anything, but I definitely follow it. Oh, that's awesome. That that's fantastic. Kudos to you. One of those is gonna make you retire. <laughs> I I'm a holder and I will wait. I mean right now I have let's see. How many opt-in token do I have already? I'm probably gonna withdraw all of it. As soon as that functionality comes out, 138.61 opt-in. Oh, that's great. <laughs> that's going to be in my Ethereum wallet in a few weeks, I hope. Yep. Yep. I think the Ox probably has a little bit more. He's the, one of the our top earners. I actually cashed out recently. Unfortunately, <laughs> I can't hold much money right now until the debt is gone after that then i might hold some but yeah. right now right now it all goes to the credit cards okay. <laughs> all right Oops. ox do you have any additional questions about opt-in tokens nope uh, Michael, do you have anything you want to say no i i admit i really 
I still am on the very early learning stages of cryptos. I still don't understand a lot of it. I need to study more. Um, I do wish I had listened to my friend Connor, who told me I should build a rig back when Bitcoin was only still only about a thousand dollars. But I didn't listen to him, so I'm also still here instead of on a yacht. But I do. It's it's something I do want to learn and get into. Uh, you know, more in the future. Yeah. Well, I, I was mining Bitcoins in my basement. Um, I had like 10 GPUs back in 2012 or something, back when Bitcoin was like six Whoa. bucks. Yeah, and I, I we, we mined probably like 100 of them. Uh, I sold out. And... Yeah, I, I, I mean, my, part, my partner kept it, his, and I sold mine. And he's, you know, kind of wealthier, but, you know, not too much wealthier, uh, yeah, you know. But it's never too late, right? It's uh, it's only six thousand now. It was like it was like twenty thousand, you know, six months ago. So yeah, always something, true. always an opportunity. It, it might go back up. You never know. Yeah. What was that, Daniel? To the moon. To the moon. That's where it's going. Just like the <laughs> Tesla. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. I mean, I like cryptocurrency. In 2017 or 16, was it last? No, it was two years ago. Um, one of the guys my dad worked for, he got into cryptocurrency in like 2009. And he hold he held everything. He's he's living large right now. But he uh, there was like a huge Bitcoin conference that he put together in Miami. And I went to it. It was, there was a lot of names there. And I was like, this, these people are talking about their cryptocurrencies. Like, I remember some guy paid for uh, a drink from, like a, a, like, a vending machine. But it was, like, they were advertising for, like, the Dash cryptocurrency. So, like, hey, here's cryptocurrency. It's this new cool thing. It's new internet money. So, he bought a drink for me. It was, like, four Dash coins. I'm, like, wow. That was, like, a 20-cent drink. And now it's, like, a $4,000 drink. So, <laughs> it's insane. Yeah, yeah. Um, so all the viewers out there, right? It's um, you know, there are, I, I can see from the chat they're talking about different coins and the mining and stuff. So I, I wanted to stress that um, there is some differences between the different coins. Uh, some some coins are not backed by anyone or any company or any industry or any uh, comp any uh, country, uh, unlike the dollar, I guess. Uh, then there's some coins that are backed. For example, like Tether is supposedly backed by cash in the bank. Um, I, I don't want to keep talking about ourselves, but we, we do back our own currency, but with the same, you know, 10 cents, whatever, you know, like when we give it out, it's worth 10 cents. And so we'll always buy it back at 10 cents because, um, you know, we're making money off of people. Um, they're doing market research, right? So the advertisers uh, pay us and we were happy to pay that back to the users. All right. That's some good stuff about opt-in i think i think it's about time to move on from opt-in at least uh one thing i do want to add i think you mentioned this um anyone who's watching this as long as it's not too far in the future there's currently a ten thousand dollar that's a lot okay ten thousand dollar giveaway or no it's a hundred thousand opt-in tokens and you can enter this giveaway at optincoin.org slash giveaway right Yep, absolutely right. So, just got to enter your email, Ethereum address, cell phone, country. It's pretty simple. Um, you could get yourself about ten thousand dollars, or more importantly, a hundred thousand opt-in coins. So, Thanks, definitely, KJ. yeah, that's right. Get on that. Uh, so now we're gonna move on from opt-in. We might go back to it. Um, this is something I, this is like probably my personal biggest like question. Um, so on earn honey, I know the biggest way that you can earn opt-in coins is through watching videos. So earlier this year, um, one of your competitors made a post on Reddit saying that they were introducing daily earning limits to help ensure users do not end up falsely banned by their quality verification partners 
and they said that you'll likely notice that over the next few months, any similar service would do the same. But I notice Earn Honey does not have daily limits. Am I wrong with that? No, you're like, absolutely right. There is right. a limit, but so there's no there limits. No that's, limit. that's a good thing. But would you say that your method of action is to just let users earn as much as they'd like, but then in turn, they'd end up getting banned, which I'm sure you've heard of the soft ban, the hard ban. Or would you say that the competitor is just entirely wrong and daily limits are not necessary? What are, like, what are your thoughts on that? Well, for one thing, uh, we're not in the business of reverse engineering um, what a quality verification partner. Uh, we actually subscribe to all of them. So we, we get all their data, like, you know, who's good, who they deem as good. And I, I have 100%, 100% faith that all our users on, you know, us or competitors anywhere else, they're, they're human, right? I, I guarantee you Ox is human. Just because, um, you know, he might look like a bot, you know, by on traffic terms and stuff because of, you know, whatever else he's doing. But I know he's human. So I, I don't I don't agree with the stance of many of these verification partners. So uh, we never hard ban anybody. As long as you watch the videos, you're not over there trying to hack our API or something. We never ban anyone. Uh, we have a 48 suspension only because we suspend the user so they don't hurt themselves anymore, right? So we feel like there's there's some data out there that some of these vendors will continuously punish different IP addresses or different um, users if they continuously look like they're way above the mean or above the norm for the amount of market research or advertising that they watch. Uh, so we, we want to kind of, you know, calm down this user and, and you know, protect his, protect him. And that's why we have the 48 hour suspensions. Um, other than that, we allow users to control their own video consumption. If a user notices a drop in earnings due to, you know, watching a little bit too many videos, this user can self-regulate, right? It's um that's what the um that's what the we have this um what is that at the top of the, of the page typically there I think there's like oh I'm sorry I'm just gonna go go to my site real quick and figure it out um, user panel up there um, that kind of gives an indication of of how much you can earn and what sites are best um, the, anyway the user can self-regulate and lighten up by doing some surveys or offers and, you know, waiting a little bit. Um, by the way, we're, we're actually redoing our surveys and offer business to integrate with MaxMind. Um, there were some people- with what? Like, Mac, what? Or you're integrating with what? MaxMind? Yeah, so MaxMind is the fraud detection of surveys oh. and offers, right? That's the company. Um, the traffic verification guys are IES mode, white ops, um, double verify, forensic. I mean, the list it goes on. Um, but MaxMind has a great traffic um, verification system for offers and video, for offers and surveys. Uh, we just integrated with them. So after the integration with them, we're going to turn up, uh, open up Peanut Labs again, Revenue Universe, um, key, like I think Kiwi Wall and, and a few other guys. And we should have that up in a couple of weeks. That's great. I think Ox actually had a question about that, but I, I didn't write it down, unfortunately. I think it was along the lines of, are you going to increase your offer walls? Yeah, so, absolutely. You, you yeah, just absolutely. mentioned they're coming back. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, many years ago, or a couple, I guess maybe a year ago, so we just put up these offer walls. We didn't really, you know, we didn't grow up in this business, right? So I, I didn't realize that some people were using um, stolen credit cards and then signing up for a lot of offers. Uh, and then after a fact, um, you know, when they do the chargeback, when it was reported lost or stolen, that these, you know, survey companies or offer companies would, you know, call us up and say, hey, you're like, you know, you're sending us fraudulent offers or fraudulent leads, right? And we, we couldn't tell, like, hey, is, I, I don't ask for a credit card information, so how am I supposed to know if anybody's real or not? Uh, so then, um, you know, we, I guess it's... It's hard learning this stuff, so so Max Mind that we hope will will solve some of this for us and, and get us back on track with these offer vendors. All right, yeah, I mean that's that was a huge issue, the last couple years where someone I this actually happened to me I think two years ago now, I was on my Earnably account and overnight someone obtained access to it, 
they've become so much more secure now. A lot of sites have been really, um, with like two factor authentication. That's definitely a big one, but they got in my account and then they completed some offers with stolen credit cards. And then it was terrible because they cashed out all the balance instantly. So I was, I woke up the next morning with no points on my account and I checked my history and someone cashed out a hundred dollars and then that's when they hit a limit of some sort that was set. But that's just a loss for any site that ever has that happen to them. Yeah, absolutely. I'm shocked that, um, do they, do they have a two factor on now for on redemption? Um, yeah, they do for earn honey or earnably at least, but I think yeah. more sites need to add some more verifications for these types of things. Yeah, Does we've, Earn um, Honey have two FA? Yeah, yeah. We we text uh, always to the phone number that's on on file. We also don't accept uh, like Google Voice numbers or VoIP numbers, so we make sure it's a cell phone. Yeah, that that's really important, especially on redemptions, because you don't want someone stealing what you've already earned. Oh, that's definitely right. Yeah, that's that's terrible, and I really feel. I hope you got your money back, whatever you had in there. <laughs> Um, I, yeah, I did. And then it caused some, a lot of changes with the site, which I still don't think it's, it's reversed those changes since that happened. Um, it just sucks. So I guess moving on, uh, still on the topic of videos, where would you say you see the industry for, for beer money in general, but also just for like video advertisements, monetization, where do you see that industry going over the next year, five years, 10 years, however long, what, where do you see it going? Uh, I think the industry is going to have to mature. Um, so all the verification services right now are gunning for us, right? They're, they're gunning for traffic that look like bots. They solved most of the you know true bots. They solved that a year ago. Now they're trying to figure out like why or why are anybody still buying their services, right? So their claim is we're gonna find not only real bots, but we're gonna find traffic that look like bots. Well, you know, what is a bot? What, what looks like a bot, right? It's like, you know, high frequency um, traffic that stays on for, you know, really long time, right? So I think that's all of beer money right there, that sentence. Um, so even though I'm sure that the crowd, beer money crowd is not a bot, we're all humans. Um, the whole industry is kind of gunning for us. Uh, so, so what's what? How are we going to, you know, solve that problem, right? So the good news is is that more and more brands are looking into incentivized advertising. I, I know it's really hard that you know it's hard to reach, uh, you know, young boy, uh, young young men like you and Ox, right? I'm a little older, but um, I think there were something like 13 to 25 year olds. Like, so many of them have ad blockers on and demanding to get paid for their time right and don't want to don't want to get you know people like youtube like facebook to take your data and just sell it you know and not get paid so i think a good point for for everybody is to meet together somewhere in the middle where um publishers and advertisers demand uh something like guaranteed in view right so you know we make sure we watch and then we get paid for it right so uh, I think that's a good middle point, and we're going to get there, I think, in the next year or two. Yeah. I mean, about, like, younger people using ad block, that, yeah, that, I think that's actually an issue, because this is something that happened, or mainly blew up last year, where people were just ad blocking on everything, and I'm guilty of this, I have ad block on everything, and then unless a site tells me, turn off ad block, I don't think I'm going to turn it off, but like it's when you're on a site and it says, Hey, we don't show like too many ads. Can you just unblock us? Like it's taking sites revenue away because people are using ad block. So then they've been going to other different means of getting money from that. So I think the big one last year was like CBS. And I mean, this wasn't, I don't think this was intentional, but they'd show or they'd mine Monero, which is a cryptocurrency in the background without people knowing. And that was like their fix for yeah. ad block. That, 
that's terrible, right? Because like you're trying to play a game, you're watching a video, and all of a sudden your processor is going like crazy, <laughs> your computer's overheating. I, I don't think that's the right solution. I, I think the advertisers need to understand that there are real people in front of a screen, and it, that we deserve to to get some sort of compensation for sitting here through their thirty seconds. All right. Um, so I don't think I have any more questions exactly about videos. But we did ask some questions on Reddit, or we we opened up the opportunity for people to ask questions on Reddit. So I took just a few a few parts of what some people said, because some people said they had like whole walls of text of questions. I'm like, yeah, we can't. I'm not going to go through all of these. But I have two questions from Send Biz Leon. Me, Send those to me though. I mean, like I don't think you know either reply to them on Reddit or you know we can we can do something else. But I, I you know. In general, I, I care yeah. about every single person. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I'll, I'll actually start with that question then. Uh, from XX Assassin three forty nine on Reddit, they asked, "Are you going to become more active on Reddit?" Uh, yeah. I when we started the company three years ago, I was on Reddit religiously, right? Um, because that was my only thing I'm doing. Uh, now I've been traveling. Like for example, last month I was at four different trade shows, um, and then. Probably in this month, uh, in June, we're going to be in San Fran twice. And then in July, we're going to be in uh, New Jersey, uh, I think DC and stuff. So in Singapore. Um, so I, I'm going to be less and less on Reddit, but I, we do have um, people answering questions on, uh, on the Earn Honey um, subreddit. Uh, just uh, on Beer Money, we're, we're never sure what we can say and we can't say. And, on, on, on Reddit, we do um, we do try to answer them. So we do have uh, somebody that this, this is the same person that answers both the support tickets and uh, the Reddit. Um, a lot of stuff though we can't say on Reddit um, just because it is public, right? Um, and some of the stuff that happens, the questions that they ask are are not are best solved using a, a private PM or something. Okay, so I guess. As just like a wrap up from that, it's like you're gonna get you're you want to answer everything on Reddit if it's like appropriate to answer stuff on Reddit. So there's the the official Earn Honey subreddit and Earn Honey account. So that's an active way, right? Yeah, it, it's great, right? On there. So like the one of the questions we always see is like, can I put up forty computers and, and watch? I'm like, no, you cannot. <laughs> right? No advertiser's gonna want it. You know, this is not gonna happen, right? Um so uh, that asking those questions on Reddit, all it does is hurt the the ad ecosystem that we face. So so those kind of posts we usually just delete. Yeah, that's actually something that um, Bidgeleon from Reddit asked. Um, I don't remember exactly what he said. I didn't copy that. But they asked, uh, is there a hard or clear device limit for Earn Honey? No. So we we promise. Um, our advertisers and we, we promise and, and we're a small company. So we go through something called a DSP, which is a demand supply platform. So we don't actually get to talk to the advertiser directly. We, we kind of like they aggregate together and bundle like stuff to us, right? Um, but the, the typical promise that um, every publisher faces is that users are there watching the videos, watching the ads. Um, you know, once in a while, maybe go to the washroom or something, that's fine. but. If anybody has, you know, a whole farm of stuff, then uh, we we cannot support that. It, it's 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 pretty basic. We cannot we will not get paid for it, so therefore we wouldn't support it. Okay, so is there any like specific limit? So it's like don't do more than three computers running these things, or is it just like don't do too much? <laughs> I think it's just don't do too much. Like I I don't. I don't know. No, no advertisers ever come out with a hard limit. Like nobody out there has has a limit, right? So, so typically, I just want to, you know, one thing that we're trying to do something is a, a new mobile game, mobile application. Uh, so, you know, there's the Earn Honey app, the TV Glee app, and there's like all the Roku apps and stuff that we have. Uh, one new one that we're trying right now is um, something where people can watch normal TV shows and discuss it, right? Um, so instead of watching Roku or something, we're watching normal TV. Like, could be a ball game, could be a football game, or or the NBA finals or something, right? And hmm. so in that case, you got you got your phone that's listening to the TV, you got your own Honey that's running. So that's at least two devices already, right? And then maybe you have a Roku in a different house. So 
in a different room. So two or three, it's it's all it's all about like not having too much on a single platform, on a single on a single you know like web or or TV or something. So you said that you're creating or working on or trying out a new app, right? Yeah, absolutely. Is um, that is that out yet, or is that still a work in progress? It's in beta, actually. So it's um, anybody interested, you know, contact you, send us, you know, emails or something. And we can we can try it out. Uh, what it does is um, it allows people to um, both uh, wager fake money, so it's you know not really gambling, on the outcomes of of certain sports events, or you can uh, answer trivia questions about uh, different shows that you're watching. Um, and all this is actually just the you know, we're trying to make it fun. The, the, the important part is like people believe that we're watching these things. Um, we make it fun and uh, and you get um, users get credit for it. I like that. That sounds really pretty fun. Yeah, thank you. Do you know, uh, do you remember, I don't know if you ever looked at this app, app but a few years ago, um, there was an app called Viggle, V-I-G-G-L-E. Have oh. you heard of that one? <laughs> Funny thing is the, the chief re- the chief revenue officer, so their top sales guy, is an advisor for us. Like he, Kevin Eriks is an advisor for Earn Honey. Oh. Yeah, so we're we're very wow, familiar with him. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Viggle used to be probably my favorite app because it'd be so fun to uh, each night you'd be like, here's what's hot on TV, and I'd say this is actually the app that got me. I'm a huge Big Brother fan, and each night I would. Uh, go on my phone, see what what's playing, and then I check into Big Brother. I get some points just for watching, and then there was trivia. Is that kind of what you're going for with this app? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's um, we don't want to be Big Brother, so our, our intention is to like <laughs> remove, strip the names and stuff out out of the the thing, right? So um, we're not looking to have uh, Big Brother, but um, just make it fun. Oh. Yeah. I love that show, though. Uh, so I, I guess are you saying if you had to compare it to, like, the app Viggle versus something like Perk TV Live, would it be, like, somewhere in the middle where it's just engaging with a TV show that you're watching? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I like that. I definitely would love to take a look at that app if if beta is open. I haven't seen anything about it. <clears throat> Um, you mean like the beta for what, for our app? Yeah. For that app. Sounds really Yeah. Cool. It's, um, yeah, it's great. We'll, we'll send you when, when we're ready to, to do something. Maybe you guys can, you know, have a little segment on, you know, new apps and numbers you've ever heard of. Yeah. That would be a uh, half of the week, one week, <laughs> uh, but let's move on to another question. Uh, this is also from Fidgelion. Why was Discovery Media removed, and when will it be back? That one is an interesting product. Um, that one is a guaranteed payment product. Um, it was removed because of the way we developed it. Um, ran afoul of uh, one of the IAB's uh, multiples of like things that are can do and can't do. Um, so the way we designed it, because of the way it's guaranteed, we had to put a lot of different redirects in there to, to do checking. And the cross domain redirects is what got us in trouble. So we had to remove it. Now, um, when it will be back, I, I think we'll be back, but we'll do it in a way that's more similar to the Buzz TVs. Um, the other thing with the, uh, the other thing, I, I don't know if you guys all use the, the Discovery Media is that the partners that we partnered with because they were paying for every impression, like, you know, regardless of whether somebody saw an ad or not, um, they would totally clobber the hell out of everybody, right? You, you know, you got like four different video, like four different ads on there, two video ads going and two banner ads. It was crazy, which means that um, our ad load per user was a really high number, right? And people were getting banned by traffic verification, people left and right. It was, it was crazy. So. So the way that we would do it in future is that we would specify to our partners, like, you know, the amount of ad load that you can have. And the only way that we can specify to them that way is, is to tie the earnings to um, the specific um, 
ad scene, not not um, 100% payout. Okay, I guess that's that's a really good answer. I actually had no idea that Discovery Media ever went away. That's just because I was at school. But I remember that was a really nice additional way, and that was available on uh, Buzz TV or not Buzz TV, uh, Video Loyalty, right? So most it of was. the sites would have that. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll do it so yeah. again, it's similar to the Buzz TV uh, guys, like Mash Cars or something else like that. <laughs> All right. Uh, so Fidge Leon, he has so many questions. I'm just going to ask one more, though. Are you planning to do something regarding the video bans? If the bans are done by the advertiser, it's clearly happening much more on Earn Honey than in other sites. Well, that's, um, that's distressing when I hear that. Uh, so on the Earn Honey sites... Um, you guys are guaranteed to get one ad um, at a time, right? We have no banners and just one. So we're, we're crediting for every for every ad that you know you guys are exposed to. Um, and we we try to really lower the ad load per user per time period. Um, the bands, I, I think we we've we've kind of walked around this, right? The bands are happen at the traffic verification partners. They never happen to hear at us. Um, the only time there's a ban is when somebody else says this traffic is no good, in which case that we can't serve any ads to it. Um, and that that's what people are seeing. Um, it's happening more on the other sites. That, that's kind of interesting. So, I mean, I would say that um, the guy who's asking it, that he might want to kind of, uh, you know, tone down his, um, his frequency or his duration, right? Maybe turn it on for eight hours at, on one computer instead of, 24 hours a day with three or five or something like that. All right. So uh, I'm going to take one last question from Reddit. Uh, someone, their username is Bowie underscore underscore. Uh, I'm going to totally rephrase this question. So Earn Honey, I guess their question is, how could you or what would you recommend or say to someone who is interested in making their own Earn Honey? It's so like an entrepreneur making their own beer money site. What would you say to them or recommend to them or something they should know before they go into something, a project of that magnitude? Yeah, uh, I, I think the industry is much different today than it was three years ago, right? I think three years ago with the perk and the five bucks and all the other big players, everybody was in it. Everybody was making money. It was, it's, um, I, I think you guys, you know, anybody that's been around for a couple of years knows that earnings are down across the board everywhere. The reason is, is the traffic ver verification processes used to be looking at bots, right? You know, provable bots. You know, the, the question used to be human versus non-human. Now the question is going to be like, what looks like a bot? So, um, so I think earnings are down across the board. And until the incentivized advertising becomes mainstream, it's going to be challenging for any startups to come in right now. Yeah, I think Ox and I were actually talking about that on last week's show where a lot of these new people would say, I'm going to make my own get paid to site where you can complete offers. But so many of them just had to get a big thumbs down right away because it's already been done before. It's been done better and it's just not unique. It's, it's right. And, and it's kind of the other thing that they're not seeing. And, and I, uh, you know, I, I welcome anybody to do this, right? There's a lot of companies in here. In this in this space, so I'm not I'm not that worried about any single startup coming up. But uh, what they should know though is to have a, a big chunk of money. So advertisers offers and surveys they pay on a net ninety, uh, which means that um, if if somebody if somebody sees something in December and we pay it out in December, um, we don't get paid out until ninety days after December thirty first. So that's uh, wow. yeah March thirty first. Is that uh, so for right all, now, like, of the ad partners? Yeah, yeah. We're rolling on probably, like, a couple million dollars of, of accounts receivable that we haven't collected. So that, you know, like, if you're going to have a startup, then have a big wad of cash. That is a lot. I, or I guess what I'm really shocked about is that 90 days seems like a really long time. For whatever reason, I thought it was, like, 45 days. But that's, like, yeah. double, so. Yeah, it's 90 days Man. because of the... Um, 
like you know end of end of end of december is when like the cutoff is right and then the, uh mostly the publishers and the and the ad networks or whatever have one month to kind of look for fraud and do any clawbacks and stuff so now you're at december uh um january 31st and that's when the the brands have to pay right the brands get ready to get an invoice at january 31st they pay that off in like 30 days so now you're looking at february 31st to the um you know the middle guys and then the middle guys pay the publishers by like you know march 31st so you're, you're looking at a really long time all right so i i was saving this question for last uh it's really just like setting the stage you can talk about whatever so i just want to say that for a very long time and people can scroll through my reddit history and they'll they'll see that i've this is true I have called Earn Honey the most innovative beer money site. And that's for pretty much everything. So we've seen that over the last few years with the introduction of t connected TV earnings, video loyalty, and of course, most massively and recently, the introduction of the opt-in coin. Is there any other things that you feel like you are planning to do with Earn Honey in the future that would be considered innovative or new? And you've already talked about the app, but is there is there anything else that you're like, this is cool, this is what Earn Honey does, and would you like to share any of that, if, yeah. if you can? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think one of the goals for us is to increase the value at per user, right? So Fisher Learning and, and Ox and you guys are, when you guys come in and, and watch an ad and, and fill out a survey or something, everybody's only looking at your input at one point in time, right? They're not really connecting all the things that you've seen or all the things that you responded to. So if we can look, if we can take a look at what you guys have done over the six months, three months, a year, then it's much more valuable, right? So if, you know, we're going to try to create a system that kind of, if you guys want to like match up your actions over a long period of time, and then kind of see how those actions impact your purchasing behavior, your, your, um, viewability or your, your, you know, preferences of different brands and different advertisers. And, um, you know, that kind of study could be worth hundreds of dollars per person, not, you know, 50 cents per person. <laughs> All right. So with that, thank you, Michael. Thank you for joining us being our very first guest. And just a reminder, um, if anyone's watching, you can enter that $10,000 giveaway of 100,000 opt-in tokens at optincoin.org slash giveaway. Thank you, Michael. Thanks for having me, KJ. It was a pleasure. Ox, do you have any last things to say? You've been silent a while. Is he gone? No, he's there. He's there? Oh. Okay, well... I guess that is it for this week. Michael, thank you so much for joining us. Next week, you guys can check us out. Um, we don't know what we're going to do exactly just yet. Uh, but again, thank you to all of you guys on Twitch who are watching and Earnably for sponsoring this episode. And again, check out that giveaway on Earn Honey. Check out optincoin.org slash giveaway. Check out everything about Optincoin. It sounds like awesome to me and... That is it for this episode, and we will see you all next week.